Welcome everyone to Global Loot League here in Stockholm. This is the first league that has its own studio and with me in this studio is Fawson, an actual homeboy from Stockholm. Yeah. How are we doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Um, it's good to be here. Good to cast some PUBG for the first time. Yeah, we're not casting Hearthstone this time. No, we are not. Lucky. We are doing the competitive game. Right? This is something that we both wanted to do for a long time. We're both really big fans of the game, big fans of competitive gaming in general and FPS, uh, FPS genre, right? You're playing a lot. Like, yeah, I've seriously been playing a, uh, a lot of PUBG and in, in the past I've been playing a lot of FPS as well, like Overwatch and CS, so mm, I liked it. I like it a lot. We'll debunk some myths here. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> anyway, this is the we, you know global loot league. This is something new. This is the preseason, so it's not a regular season yet. So we're testing out some rules. We're going, you know, we invite some teams for the first week. So we're gonna discuss exactly what it is all about. We have three phases. The first phase, which is happening off stream, were the qualifiers. We had three lobbies for each region, so EU and NA. From those regions, two teams are qualified for the weekly final, which we have today, but also, that is very important, we have two teams from each region that is being qualified based upon the number of kills. Yeah, and uh, I think that's an interesting aspect that uh, none other uh, <laughs> PUBG <Good> tournament <laughs> has utilized so far, and uh, it's something that is very interactive. It it gives uh, players another type of strategy they can mm -hmm, practice, mm -hmm. where they go for a lot of kills instead of positioning, and it's something that I think most viewers enjoy as well. Oh seeing yeah, a lot definitely. of fights and action at definitely. all times. That is correct. I think that this this aggressive way of playing will be amazing to watch. And here we have the point system for the games that we'll have today. We'll have a best of five, and this. Placement is of course based upon each game, uh, but it was, what is very interesting, it was way top heavier, top, top sorry, top heavy before. But after talking with the pro teams, having some feedback and so on, Global Loot League decided to actually change the points and make it less top heavy. So instead of like an example, 300 points for the first place, you have 200. That's also very important because it gives wider spectrum of games to the yeah. players and you know no <laughs> camping basically if you win two e first games every game matters more because in exactly. the past when you get a first place and a good s second round placement uh, then you you're pretty much set but every mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. single game you have to fight uh, for victory now exactly and also we have a different way of counting points towards kills because we have as you know like an incentive to get more kills towards the yeah, delayed game because the first five kills if I remember correctly mm -hmm. are less weighted than the, the later that. on, yeah, it grows exponentially. The more kills you get, the more points you get for every kill after those breaking points. So when you're getting close to five or ten kills, those are the breaking points where you could really like push push it a bit more, go mm -hmm. out and kill people because you know that every kill you get after that, you get a lot of points. So it's especially important when, an example, a sole player is left of a team, right? Mm -hmm. And then you make a calculation: is it worth to be aggressive? Is it worth to be camping for a higher placement, right? Because there, that can be this breaking point yeah. that will give you an additional. Boost. If you know that the enemy team has lost a player and, and you are still four players, uh, it's a really good idea to push for kills then because it's not as risky as a four versus four and mm -hmm. you still get mm -hmm. rewarded a lot from the, this, this point system. Oh yeah, definitely. And it also makes a difference for an example staying kills from other teams. Right? Mm. If someone is downed, then you have a small incentive to actually kill the downed guy instead of going for the guy that is like you know still that running. That is out. true. I was talking about that with um, some other pro players before because I was thinking this is genius. You can just uh, wait for two people to team fight and just mm -hmm. try and pick up all the knocked guys without engaging either of the team. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's, it's probably a strategy we might see in this tournament. Especially would be like really cool to do with suppressors. Right, mm. because then you're not giving away your exact position when you're stealing those kills, mm -hmm. so it can be more, you know, gorilla, basically. Yeah, and whoever gets knocked down will probably think that it's actually from the team they're fighting and not from a third team. So. Exactly. Who's paying attention to the kill feed when you're in the battle, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people do actually. I don't know how they do it. 
but they do it. They they do it. I mean, there's a lot of uh, waiting time as well in this game where you hold a good position and mm -hmm. then you have nothing else to do really but look out the window and look at the kill feed, you know, to see oh, shooting. Team Liquid lost a member, <laughs> you know, so they're only three. Next time we see them, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that yeah, that is another like piece of information that can influence the way you play the game, mm -hmm. especially when you see like. As you said, like if, if there's a position like a building and you know that a team has lost two members because you knew that 10 minutes ago they were like yeah. a team fight, then you know how to breach the building because they are not able to hold every single exit. Makes mm -hmm. sense? For sure. Right. So other than that, from the rules that we need to mention uh, will be server rules because that's also impactful, right? So when it comes to spawns, I mean loot spawns, there are no modif modifiers. The mm -hmm. ARs, the snipers, everything is set to standard, but there are no pants and other stuff like that on on the planet. <laughs> Let's there say no that. pants? I mean, yeah, because... You, you mean cosmetics? Yeah, the cosmetics, right? Oh, because a pan is a, a pan. Pants. Oh, yeah. pants. Oh. You know, I'm Polish, you're Swedish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can make it work. Yeah, um, and, and, and no red zone <laughs> as well. Yeah, and no red zone. The weather is set to clear, so there will be no rain and uh, no mist, which is something that the pro players kind of like, I think, because it, yeah. it gives another random aspect to the game when there's mist and some team just turns around and then they come out of the mist. And I can definitely understand not wanting to play on the rain map mm -hmm. because it's just like the audio is so messed up during that time. But a fog, I actually like fog, the fog a little bit because it forces different strategy. It's like a yeah. completely new game when you play the fog. For sure. But... Uh, I think that a lot of teams are happy that they don't have to practice mist in case there will be oh, mist. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a <laughs> random chance. They'd rather practice Definitely. something that will be consistent and that they can be comfortable with. It's all about consistency in general mm -hmm. when it comes to PUBG or PUBG or whatever you name it. Uh, it's funny actually when you think about it, the big picture of the game, it's very similar to Hearthstone. It's like about the long run. It's not about one qualifier. It's not about yeah. one tournament. It's, a, it's about performing over time and proving that in game you can actually be consistent. Yeah, right. because there is, there's always going to be the aspect of the circle and how mm -hmm. it moves and uh, how lucky you are in the end to get the better circle. But over the course of a lot of games, if you are consistent, it will still show who's the better player. Exactly. When it comes to consistency, we can talk about some of the pl some of the teams that we have because we have 18 teams. So worth mentioning, the first week of the weekly final has actually four invites. Because of the fact that next week we will have four teams that are going to be top four this week. Mm -hmm. So obviously we don't have four best teams from the previous week, so we had to start with some invites. Yeah. right? So the four invited teams are Gorilla Core. I mean, not mind-blowing. They are really performing awesomely lately. Uh, then we have Penta Sports, Liquid, of course, and Theater of Mayhem. So those are the four invited teams. rest of them, so the 14, 14 other teams, were qualified through the qualifiers, uh, no matter when. But, in general, we have really stuck lineup. Like, it's amazing to see the, the teams that we have here, like Kingwin, an example. I mean, we both know the, 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 the team actually pretty well in person. Uh, we don't have Method here. They tried to qualify, but actually didn't, didn't get here. Yeah, uh, then we, the, Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Uh, we have other stack teams, like an example, Ghost Gaming, who just qualified for IEM. So this will be one of the top teams here in this lobby. We have Noble that we saw during Gamescom. Uh, we have uh, Totality from NA who qualified from the third lobby. Then we have Penguins, uh, sorry, G-Lab Penguins, uh, who qualified towards, um, sorry, through the wild card, which, which is the, the most skills. skills. Yeah. Exactly. The other team that qualified was Noble actually, through the wild card as well. I can't remember how many uh, how many kills was that, but above 30, like 34, That's something like that. That's a lot. And uh, what, what else? Theater Harvo of Gaming. Mayhem. Yeah, Theater of Mayhem was, we was played, invited. Uh, they actually qualified for the um, Gamescom Invitational mm -hmm. uh, through the open bracket. And they actually got first or second in duos after that as well. Oh, so yeah. they went through an open qualifier and then they actually demolished the competition as well in the main tournament. Yeah. So those are uh, really good players as well. Definitely. I mean, when you just see the lineup... I think almost every single team, I mean, there are some you know exceptions, but almost every single team is already known in the PUBG scene when it comes to like the pro players and so on. Um, they, they are known, but they are not always known to the community. Oh and this yeah, is, yeah, this yeah. is um, uh, time for them to show, you know, get their name out there. Most of the pro players, they know each other by practicing, by screaming. They know all the names, but the community don't really know anyone except for the streamers, you know? Yeah. So this is a really good opportunity to get yourself out I there, your name out there. I mean, I'm laughing so hard because it's like, 
we can just talk about Hearthstone and PUBG and have the same sentences, mm -hmm. right? For sure. It's like in the beginning, like 2014, 2013, when it comes to Hearthstone, everyone knew the streamers, no one knew the professional players or like the up and coming stars, yeah, right? And, and usually those were the better players. The, oh, the, yeah. the non streamer ones were yeah. the really good ones. It took two years. But we got there, right? Yeah, so I'm assuming that will be the same case, but probably accelerated by a large margin mm -hmm. when it comes to PUBG because we have so many community tournaments, right? We do. There's like every single week you have three, four basically duos as well. Uh, now we also we have this, like this. I'm pretty hyped about Global, lead, uh, global Loot League, yeah. sorry. Because first of all, it's gonna bring out the consistency out of teams. And second of all, it has the incentive for the newer teams or, or even you know newly formed teams to actually try to get into this because each week you will have the qualifier mm -hmm. yeah uh this this tournament is going to be a lot of prestige uh for sure because um, in the start of a scene like PUBG, all these early tournaments they are very important to get your name name out there for uh, other invites in later tournaments Definitely. so everyone is really try harding in the start because it can snowball from there you know if you get invited and you don't have to play the qualifier phases, that's extremely good because oh, usually the qualifier stages are <laughs> can be harder than the actual <laughs> yeah, main event. Exactly. So it's so funny. Like We have seen this in IEM qualifiers. Some of the lobbies were so stacked they could actually be tournaments mm. itself. You know, So it was pretty funny. And when you see this lobby, it's like amazing. It will be super um, like exciting to watch all the teams from EU battle against NA as well because we have some meta game differences between the regions as well. Yeah, for sure. And also the fact that this is one of the first tournaments, if not the first, that values kills a lot more than mm -hmm. other tournaments. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not some teams decide to go w very, very aggressive compared to the usual passive strategy of PUBG that we've seen before in tournaments. So. We also had the change of the circle damage a few days ago, right? Yeah. So this might affect a little bit the yeah. way it's being played out as well. The blue circle used to be, tanking the blue circle used to be a very efficient strategy in at least duos. In squads it was a bit harder to do because you are four people, which requires four, more heal, uh, four times more healing than mm -hmm. solos. Um, but th we've seen some uh, gimmicky strategies like TSM used, if they had a good placement in the first two rounds, they would have one guy one staying guy in the gas. In the back, yeah. And in case they, their squad got wiped out, at least he's still in the gas, healing for that top placement to secure wins, you know? Yeah, that was slightly annoying. And I think, I mean, everyone, even the players that were using the strat, right, they didn't like it. They were yeah. just forced because when you're competitive, you do whatever you can yeah. to, to win. You don't right? like it, but you have to do it because it's an aspect of the game. You do whatever you whatever it takes to win and uh, I mean blue blue hole recognized that and they ch changed the way the blue does damage to you the further away you are from the circle the more damage you take now and it doesn't count for the very first circle but after that it's gonna do a lot of damage if you're gonna mm -hmm. camp in the gas I mean now nowadays even the second circle is actually not noticeable when yeah. it comes to the damage it stacks pretty fast like before the update you could have tanked the second circle and still be very comfortable now we're even fully boosted and you still feel like, oh man, that is actually damaging a lot, right? So that's the incentive to go out of the uh, second circle as soon as possible, especially in the squad when you, like, you know, a lot of teams are now practicing less looting mm -hmm. or just, you know, kind of like more efficient way of looting and then going into the middle of the circle. Yeah. So in this way, uh, this way, you can't even have enough of healing material to get back from the damage that circle does. Absolutely. It's... Um it's way riskier now to play in the gas than it was before. Especially in squads. Duos, it's kind of okay, but in squads, if you are in the gas for too long, in the blue, and then you drive into the circle, the car can the cars can get demolished in one second by uh, by a team of four, you know? Yeah, that's that's the thing that many players that are on playing public games, even you know, in squads and they're like winning 60% or whatever, mm -hmm. then they go into a custom lobby with decent teams and the first thing they notice is that when you drive a car, you're actually gonna get blown up pretty fast or just yeah. straight killed. Because when you have a decent aim, you're gonna hit that guy consistently, right? And that's one thing that we can't really appreciate now in the game because of the spectator mode that is being worked on, right? Mm -hmm. we, don't, we, we cannot really appreciate the maxmanship of a guy that is just shooting because it's kind of glitchy, right? Yeah. I would love to talk about like, you know, insane players that have that insane aim, but at the same time, PUBG is not exactly a game that is all about the aim, 
right? Certainly not. I mean, even I can, could get top 30 in EU wow. without being <laughs> a decent aimer compared to these guys. So it's about strategy, and I like the fact that it's about strategy. But otherwise, it becomes a counter strike go death match kind of scenario. I, so I really appreciate the fact that it's a lot of strategy in an FPS game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you compare CSGO and PUBG, you can argue that because of the fact that PUBG is more complicated because you have wider map, you have, like, you know, you can't really practice many spots in the game mm -hmm. because it changes every single time. So you don't have the practice, like, in CSGO, you're practicing a train map, right? Yeah. I mean, literally train. So you know exactly where are the spots where you're keeping at and so on. You, what you can do in PUBG is you can practice, an example, buildings, breaching buildings, mm -hmm. positioning in the buildings. But then when you play the ga actual game, suddenly the circle is like changing your plan and you have to adjust. So, yeah. you know. The one thing you can practice is um, if a team decides to jump Georgia Pool or whatever, mm -hmm. they can decide and practice a route where they will go every time. They start here and then they move to this building and then they move to this building, you know. So they always have uh, someone covering every angle when they're doing on the, the looting spree. I mean, definitely. Like an example in Gorgopol, you have the duplexes, right, that are being like really high tier when it comes to loot. Mm -hmm. uh, then the six buildings behind them, behind the puzzles, oh, yeah. right? Those are like the main loot. Uh, areas that you need to do and you need to the have them trained right because mm -hmm. if two teams are going for the same you need to like be prepared for that stuff. yeah and from what i heard uh from uh, pro players screaming a lot of the teams jump the same every time because they practice engaging that area and, and holding that area in case another team gets there yeah they don't want to mix it up too much i mean if they jump 90 percent of the time military power and then That's they go once gorilla core and, <laughs> and then they go <laughs> once to um Georgia pool and they haven't practiced that as much they will get demolished by the other team who knows all the angles and where to hold and every team member knows exactly where they should loot but that's like a double edged sword right if if the plane kind of denies you the mm. most practiced spot then you need to adjust and if you don't adjust well because you practice like only like one or two spots right yeah then you kind of talked so it's you true. need to be flexible it is true uh, most of the time though you can go for a car and get to whatever you used to practice, even mm -hmm. without far flying, mm -hmm. um, they know all these spots for the car spawns for sure by oh, yeah. heart. There's there's no question there. You can get unlucky though, as you say. <laughs> if, if the plane <laughs> goes in an awkward direction and the only hope you have is to go on this road and find a car, and th there's no car there this time, then you gotta have a backup plan. Yeah, man. I, I, so many times when I jumped, uh, the you know the two garages in the center of the map, mm -hmm. like on the on the east side of the school, right? Yeah, you yeah. have the two garages. There's like eight spots for the cars. Yeah, with you two jump hard in spots. And there's not a single one, and you're like, what? And you're being stranded. It like happens. And it's uh, one of the most dangerous areas to be in too, because yeah. it's so close to school and apartments, and it's pretty open, no trees really. So, <laughs> <laughs> might be funny in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's. There's so many things that you can talk about the game. That's fantastic, actually. That's something I love about PUBG, because you can just talk about the strategy, talk and talk about the options that the teams do. And what is fascinating is that every single game will bring something new mm -hmm. out of it, right? Especially when you just see the macro decisions. That's something that you have, like, you know, let's say League of Legends, right? Uh, there's a lot of mechanical skill involved, but at yep. the same time, the macro is way more important than, than the micro. And the same, you can say the same about PUBG. So when you see the rotations, when you see the circle management, uh, the item management as well, right? Because yeah. you need to manage ammo, you need to manage the healings, uh, you need to manage boosts and so on. Distributed everything evenly and... Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of aspects that you don't see of the game. You can only know it when you play the game. But at the same time, I think PUBG is one of the most enjoyable to watch games right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, I like to watch it too. It's funny, it's... Fun to play, fun to watch. I think it's no surprise that they've gained so much popularity in these past months, you know. Yeah. Let's just fix the spectator mode and the service, and it will be fantastic. Yeah, and they're working on it. I mean, they For have sure. a big franchise now, and it's it's all about getting it into a stable product, uh, a release stage. Yep. I mean, we're going to see some improvements uh, again, I will say. In Hearthstone, we had similar problems, right? The spectator mm. mode is still kind of shaky, let's say like that. But the the solution was just to capture the um, audience. Sorry, uh, the players' monitors, right? Yeah. And that was the solution used in, at Gamescom, right? Right now here, well, we obviously play online, so we can't really do that, mm. right? So we are uh, dependent on the spectator mode. Uh, but still, I think, as as I said, PUBG is a game of macro decisions. 
this is the more important thing to just watch and see how the teams are adapting to new meta games. Mm -hmm. uh, an example, one thing I really like is that more and more teams are actually developing like um, specialists. An example, a lurker, right? Yeah, that's, a that's flanker. A exactly. Um, so it's, I, I'm, I meant the lurker because that's a you know, nomenclature that you use in CSGO, an example. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite, actually, spots to play in because you have more freedom. But the problem is when you play in custom lobbies with high-level players, there's not that many space. All right, we're jumping into the first game of Global Loot League and we have the plane going from northwest towards the military base and already, oh, wow that's a lot of teams actually jumping out already yeah a lot of people are going for the georgia pool area it seems like uh which is one of the best looting areas in the game because it's so loot efficient and everything is very compact military has a high tier loot but it's a little bit more spread out mm -hmm. all right we're gonna see pochinki drop yeah so it's actually just one team who ha we have some divided attention towards they're the looking team. around you can see on the minimap they're all looking around making sure there are no other teams or if there are to position themselves well but Pochinki, if you're alone here it's a gold mine oh yeah definitely. it is definitely a gold mine and you have two um car spawns that can be you know easily done like in, in most of the games we actually have them all right we have a big map again and also don't forget the positioning of this town. It's in the middle of the middle, so there's not going to be a circle that's going to screw you over, really. Oh, yeah, definitely. Penta dropped Gergopol, and they are alone in another gold mine. Look at that. Oof. Duplexes and the uh, six duplexes behind apartments are just theirs. That is ridiculous, actually. Yeah, and we're probably going to see this in the later games, too. They, like As I said, these pro teams, they, they practice dropping... Uh, at the same place every time to make sure that they know the ins and outs of the town and mm -hmm. everything and every route from it. On the west side, we see uh, one duo from one team, actually three members of one team. Let's see how it is. Um, so in Gogopol, we have actually three teams. There's G2 and Penta. And then on the north side, we have other teams as well. Now we see... Hmm. Is it a knockout already? One knockout. He's driving him over. No way. <laughs> oh my god. Pony he got Rider a, <laughs> already got a road dead. kill. Theater from Mayhem losing a player there. Early game. Like, no one prepared was prepared for that, right? Yeah, they were. F I, I guess they were far flying, and uh, some team got the vehicle before them, and uh, uh, that's the <laughs> end of end of him. Well, <laughs> that, that must <laughs> feel really awful. That is, yeah. At the start of the terrible. tournament, getting run over like that, it must be almost humiliating. At a certain <laughs> level. Wow, you're savage, man. By the way, let's talk a little bit about the left side of the screen because that's something that I don't think a single tournament made yet. This is like a kill feed that is maybe not positioned towards the names, but you can see every single team uh, with their members next to it, right? Players so you can see already that Noble and Fiero of Mayhem have only three members left. Mm -hmm. And this was updated real time, so it's actually really helpful when someone tunes in into the game, like, you know, after 10 minutes or something like that, and they see, oh, okay, half a gaming has only two players left or something like that. So it's actually pretty useful. Now we can see G-Core in Rosshawk, actually just alone as well. No one is in school. I wonder where the last team member is of this team, if he decided to go to school, because it's a, it's a pretty, yeah, I think he's, uh, yeah, he's in the school, actually. It's a, it's a pretty common strategy when you drop in the center like this next to apartments and school. You can drop, uh, you can have this as your standard, and then you can scout the air. Oh, no one is dropping school. We're sending one team member over mm -hmm. there to get mm -hmm. all the loot. It's it's fairly common, and it's, uh, it's a really good strategy, in my opinion. I Hollywood like Hammers have Severny alone, with the shooting range as well, so that's pretty good for them. The, so cir the circle is fair, I yes. would say. It's in yes. the middle of the middle. There's no military zone. Uh, just very fair, I feel like. And uh, we see Liquid moving over to prison here, which has pretty high tier loot as well. But not much loot, right? Not it's much like loot, but it's high tier. It's, it's more likely to be the level 3 helmets or level 3 armor. Mm -hmm. uh, but 8 scopes as well. It's not right? very compact. Oh, 8 scopes. He actually got an A scope right now. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I know that a lot of people uh, prefer the 4 times over the 8 times. What is your opinion on that? Well, I, I was preferring the 8 times over the 4 times before the changes to it. Because mm -hmm. it feels like sometimes you just aim with the four times and it doesn't go the way you want it, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and it turns out it wasn't really calibrated and so on. Uh, so nowadays I like it way more. Yeah. I prefer the eight scope uh, 
almost every single time. First drop, uh, first drop, first drop is is getting in the middle of the map. Actually, that's near warehouse next to the shelter. We see a G Core member getting knocked out by Liquid Haze as well. I wonder if that was the the G Core member that went school alone. Uh, it is possible. Adrops is something that is interesting here uh, because. You, it's worth fighting for an airdrop now that kills are worth more. Yeah, that is definitely true. And also with the fact that a lot of players are going for the lower loot, uh, lower loot places, uh, loot from a package is actually more important mm -hmm. than before, right? You can see it has a 4 times scope and an M249. M249 is not the worst thing in squads where blowing up vehicles I is a very important thing. It. And it, since it has zero recoil in prone position, oh, yeah. it's, it's a monster. For That's sure. true. Flyquest in Venezia, or whatever you call it, the water, water city, they have their own place to it as well. It seems like actually a lot of teams are just doing their own right now, and they're getting like you know di di divided between all the the entire map and just getting loot. Yeah, everyone. It's it's like when I talk to the pro players, everyone knows everyone's spot, mm -hmm. so they're trying to just stay out of each other's way in the start most of the time but now we see liquid haze trying to get some picks out of that car not quite hitting those needed headshots but it's a very hard shot and uh, the risk is worth taking definitely i mean in the beginning of the game you're gonna change your positions really often so mm -hmm. giving away your position when you shoot at a car is worth it because you will be you know out of there in minutes or maybe two right yeah absolutely and I feel like right now people are getting all the vehicles they need. The more ve vehicles you have in squad, the better. You would, pr it, The best thing is to have four UACs, most likely, because those provide the best cover. And uh, you don't want to have more than one guy, if you can, in a car. Because whenever an opponent shoots at your car, even if they don't hit the driver, they might hit another teammate in, yeah. the, in the car. That is definitely true. And in later stages of the game, you just do cover out of them, right? You might be ending up in a circle that has no, you know, no rocks, no trees, not, no nothing. And yeah. then you build a cover out of the car, and you can actually blow it up yourself. So you don't risk getting blown up. Exactly. Yeah, it's very, very common. Uh, usually they shoot the wheels as well if it's very late and you're not going to use it anymore. All right. Uh, Liquid again has a fight. And he's again shooting against the people. Amaker getting out there with the car. Feels like it's not worth. Maybe he didn't have the right scope for that fight. Um, Liquid Moleman with the four time scope and the vector seems like. What do you feel like about what do you feel like um, the vector? Is it good? I think it's kind of over nerfed. Right over nerfed? Now. Yeah, it yeah. was insanely good before, and I'm glad they nerfed it because everyone was using it, and then the nerf hit. But I feel like it's not as bad as the UMP, honestly. If you have all the attachments. Mm, but when you consider the rarity, I prefer oh, the UMP. Yeah, right? of course, it's it's rare. Especially. In squads, in on higher tier, uh, you know, uh, on higher tier gameplay, there's no way you're gonna get additional ammo for that gun later mm -hmm. on, because it's so important to have a lot of uh, ammo for vector, and I mean, in it, it increases a little bit uh, with the amount of, um, uh, of, of the ammo being spawned because of the Tommy gun. Yeah. But at the same time, no one is actually carrying that gun, so you're gonna not gonna get additional ammo mid game. For but example. at the same time, if a lot of people, oh, we see some tries here. Can he get that headshot? Yeah, that's the thing that we cannot appreciate now. We are, like you know, yeah. the aim is kind of <laughs> lagging, uh, but at yeah. the same time, you can see the outcome. The, the aim is the aim is way better than <laughs> what it appears um, when you expected people. Yeah, it's a little bit delayed. I saw that on the kill feed, Valen from G two got killed or knocked out. I think killed or already. That had to be in a vehic vehicle because they are now changing uh, their positions. Oh, Moleman oh. getting knocked out right now. By cut test. In a bad position, he's gonna get killed here momentarily. It seems like. He doesn't have any time to get a heal here. He's just trying to scout for his teammate, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a lot of kills, like in the beginning of the game, when you think about it. Yeah, they are really valuing these kills, and it's really important that they also pick them off once they get knocked out, because otherwise another one can steal the kill mm -hmm. by killing the knocked mm -hmm. out guy. So making sure that he get the kill here is very important. Trying to get another knockout on this UAC driver. Not quite hitting the shots. M4, long range, I mean, it's a decent the velocity weapon, but at the same time, you always prefer to have a Mini or M16 when you shoot at those vehicles, right? Yeah. I, I see a lot of people prefer the SCAR now over the M4, with mm -hmm. even with all attachments on it. I think it's it's because of the way it recoils. 
and the aim punch. The scar oh, is ac- the scar is actually the best gun Dual for aim weapons, punch. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I I really like it as well because of the aim punch because you win duels because of that. When someone's just getting thrown off, right? Skoom is and only shooting at Catastic and now he's getting knocked out and gonna he be He really wants yeah. this kill. He needs to finish up before anyone else steals that kill. Painkilling up, making sure that he stays healthy. And uh, right now the blue circle is closing in and we still see some teams at Georgia Pool. There's a team fight going on next to the school compound. Flyk was highly damaged. There's a lot of people here taking cover in that house. That's g and Flyk was against each other. They're taking the north position. Flykers will have actually very good angles against them. Yeah. The problem is that the rock provides a lot of cover for g so If they can take, take advantage of the positioning in that rock formation, they can shoot out the, the, the people in the buildings. But the problem is, in squads, if you just shoot someone in the building, he will get rest easily. He will get rest for sure, unless you have grenades to finish them off. Exactly. That's one metagame call that I really like lately. People are bringing way more grenades than they did before. So they sacrifice slots for an example ammo, to bring in grenades. Even Molotovs are amazing at yes. finishing off knocked out players and exactly. making sure they're not getting rest. Uh, G Core only have three players um, as well, which is important to note because one got killed early game. And the other of Mayhem is actually down to two. So they're the first team that is being down to 30, uh, sorry, tw- 50%. Uh, interesting to see that no one is camping the bridges. Yeah. I was wondering if actually Ghost Gaming will take that position because they were nearby uh, the west side but they did abandon that position pretty fast. G-Core deciding to go <laughs> by foot over the open field, which is extremely risky with no cover, but it seems like they're going to get away. Uh, and Maybe they're thinking about fl- flanking these uh, people at the compound near them. Yeah, the flag was... Probably is not aware of change uh, of the change of the position because from this um, from from their position you can actually hide all the movement behind mm. the small slopes uh, and you can just c- change the entire positioning of the team right without them noticing. Penta so everyone is <laughs> counting down the seconds here into the new circle and uh, everything is gonna be decided very fast. They're already on the move so they can quickly get to a good position. Like starting your car before the blue circle hits mm-hmm. uh, is, is really important. You cannot sit in the house and wait for it to finish. You have to all already be driving so you can get a good position. From Penta we actually see um, there are two like main strategies basically, right? We see Penta that are abandoning the vehicles at the edge of the circle mm-hmm. and then trying to get a better position from there. The other strategy would be to go in the middle of the circle mm-hmm. and camp the best position because that gives you a better positioning for the most likely for the next circle that will hit. Right? Yeah. So you don't have to move again. I believe they only had one car and a bike, right? So Yeah. They don't want to be too many one vehicle as well. And but the bike is kind of inconsistent car. with the, the car. Um, so yeah, they're taking the hill over here. I, I'm i not sure about this position. Uh, they have built quite a nice little uh, yeah, camp there G-Lab, with penguins. cars and rocks. Uh, it's fairly okay. It's not UACs. It's a buggy and two Dacias. And there are all four on this, uh, on this hill. This is the entire G-Lab team. Those are the guys that were killing the most yeah, in s- Americans region. Sorry, in the e- e- European region. Yeah, so usually um, it used to be about going to a great compound and holding the house there. But mm-hmm. nowadays, the pros are actually uh, changing the meta towards ridges and hills, mm-hmm. wi- which they find more useful and not as vulnerable to grenades and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. That's because of the meta change, right? Mm-hmm. More people are bringing grenades. The buildings are actually less safe because of that. Because most of the buildings in PUBG actually have no way of hiding. Mm-hmm. Like inside, you have no cover. You're just being blown out by a grenade, especially after they change the grenades, that then they have a bigger, wider array. Yeah, the grenades are really, really, really good now. Now we see G2 taking shots at Penta. And Penta, because of the position that they took on the hill, they are being visible by multiple angles. Mm-hmm. So because they want, of course, to be aware of what's happening, uh, like ar- around, they need to peek, right? And they are being then vulnerable to shots from all around uh, the map. G-Core taking sh- uh, sorry, g are being shot at heavy damage to Hexet, and they're being shot by Velness from Team uh, Blank, the EU Qualifier Lobby 3 guys. Blank is one of the teams that actually got recently into the game. Yep. Uh, I mean, at least um, 
to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong, but they are getting some results lately. So this is the proving ground for them. Yeah, and uh, the circle still remains very, very centered after all this time. It's uh, it's going to be the same positions, not shifting towards east or west at all. Liquid building, <laughs> nice cover, and that small pit. Yeah, uh, it's the ridges, man. Mm -hmm. It's um, They're really good compared to the houses once people start to get good in this game. I really like the one house ne nearby to this position, actually, like uh, behind the big warehouse. It's mm. middle of the open. Oh, yeah, that's a very, very good spot because you can't actually get close to it and grenade it mm -hmm. without being mm -hmm. killed because it's there like are no open trees. Space. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those really good compounds as well. There are two of them in the in the game. Um, Ghoul from Ghost side. Gaming taking shots at... Can't really see the names, man. The Mini. That? That's G2, actually. So my comrades. Yeah, they just... <laughs> well, I mean, taking shots from that... Um, from that length, let's say. Um, yeah, from I that I distance. Think, I, I think he was shooting at the wheels. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, he has a suppressor, right? Yeah. So he can do this. Even with Mini-14, which is uh, the second loudest um, weapon in mm -hmm. the game, with the suppressor, you can still kind of get those shots in, especially to people who are on the edge of the circle, because that those are the guys that need those vehicles the most. Yeah, as you can see here, the vehicles are parked really well, and it's not... There's, there, there's no angle for them to yeah. get shot. Someone has to be on the lantern, basically, yeah, to exactly. actually shot at them. So every pro knows this. Uh, they always park it perfectly so they don't get taken out the wheels. And uh, we're just going to see them hold this posi position for now. We see some, some small shots. We see some people at the bridge, actually, um, holding in case it shifts towards military. But it's very unlikely with the area being so uh, big on the other side, mm -hmm. main island. Liquid being shot at right now, and well, that this this is the circle when a lot of people will die, like the next circle, I mean, because mm -hmm. the area is getting smaller. We can see that it's being divided uh, by the water, so people will just not be able to camp. Some great shots coming out here from Fixero. He's hitting twice, and he needs one more hit. Oh man, that he was really lo close. He lost vision there, and uh, he gets to get healed. In the prone. meantime. Skoom just got knocked out by a headshot, probably just... By the car 98k. Yeah. So the thing is that uh, a lot of people... But he's in the he's in a good position, but he's bleeding out fast. Look at this. Health. Yeah, his teammates are not going to be able to get him in time, I think. Yeah, there's no one around him. He's just, you know, kind of praying, but there's nothing yeah. you can save, and he's dead. So the thing with the car 98k is that a lot of people have gone to a double rifle meta mm -hmm. or rifle shotgun meta. Uh, because against a really good player, it's very hard to hit that car 98 c shot because he's not going to stand still for more than a split second, you know, when he's yeah. firing his bullet. Uh, but in a team fight, if you're not being focused as the sniper, you can get a shot at someone who's focusing one of your teammates. The problem is that the value of the car 98 goes significantly lower when people have tier 3 gear. Yeah. Like when someone has a body armor and the helmet, then you're like, well, what do I do? Do I shoot the leg then? Mm. Yeah, it, it's true. Alright, well, Penta has two bikes, actually. Even when it comes to the three cycle, I would say they're very, very valuable because of the high speed. It's so rough to actually hit someone on the bike when he's going like 140 kilometers mm -hmm. an hour. It's just hard, especially with a four time scope or an eight time scope. It's almost impossible to hit anyone yeah, on a bike. For sure. And this is a really oh. great position from Penta. It's, it's, it's the absolute amazing. best compound you can have right now. Everything is open. They're taking shots towards uh, people get going towards the cliffs. I mean, they have fantastic position, as you said. Everything is open for them. It looks like this, this is favoring them heavily to actually have a... And there's another team coming in here. It's Kingwin, I believe. Yeah, uh, Ibiza, Ibiza got shot down and he stopped at the crates right they're now. They're going to try and take this. Grenades are coming in, though. Double grenades from uh, Penta. And they're probably going to get someone. Oh, oh they get God. two, two, three. Holy uh, moly, Leighton, there's Ibiza one more and Larson got That's knocked out. Fast face. Fast face, and he's got down. Wow. The entire team got knocked That's out by grenades. That's fantastic. I love it. That's exactly what we were talking about. These yeah. The grenades nowadays are so strong, and they're insane. There's nowhere to go for them to avoid the grenade, because if they move out of the cover, they get shot instead. Yeah, that, that was smokes, a fantastic move. Smoke's move. coming in as well. Superb Dude. play by, uh, by G-Core. Like, wow. Holy moly, that was fantastic. I All love the it. nades and the smokes to get the loot out of yeah. King Gwyn after that, that was amazing. And th this way, King Gwyn is actually the first team to lose. 
in the first round of GL out. Unfortunately, um, we see the cliff holding strategy is also decent here. There's a ridge that makes it a great cover if you're proning. You, you won't be able to get shot from the farm buildings. Yeah, Penta uh, getting shot at heavily. Makandog is coming, coming in, trying to pick off the uh, knocked out guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he takes a lot of damage. He's gonna bleed out right here. I mean, uh, when you're crawling, you're really slow. That grenade yeah. will touch you, like for sure. It will, and we see him getting bled out right now. Uh, more grenades coming in. Grenade seems to be <laughs> the MVP of this match. Look at Liquid. They are taking the edge of the circle, so that will be really risky because they're going straight to another team. Yeah, but they have no other option because they were a bit late coming into that third circle. Yep, Gorilla Call. Still having a good, good positioning now. They could have taken a lot of shots. Like here is at 10 HP. Yeah, and they only have two members remaining in the team. They gotta be very careful here how they rotate on this map. FlyQuest is eliminated as well. They lost every single member. I mean, when you think about it, this lobby is just stacked. Yeah, insanely good players, as you can see. Tyron uh, from G2 flanked. got knocked out right now by Velns from Blank. They need to go fast here. Yeah, this this damage is actually pretty high. G2 is in the blue as well now, getting approached by another team, and they know that that's gonna happen. So they need to make a decision: do we take the fight? Do we go away? But their vehicles were knocked out, right? Mm -hmm. By who was that? Someone from G Core shooting at at the vehicles. Yeah, from the them. wheels. Yeah. So they have one. We still see a couple of people in the blue. Yeah. Uh, we see that the Ghost Gaming has actually good positioning as well in the yellow buildings next to the cliffs. G2 is tanking the blue and now Clayton from G2 is actually being knocked by Velnes again. That guy is actually insane. He's taking those shots really well. Yeah, and they are for sure dead here. Um, Wacko might be able to sneak by, but they know that he's there and he's gonna take shots at him. He ah. gets behind cover. And, but the damage is uh, really high right now. And in he's the blue. super far away from the edge of the circle. Yeah, so he, needs to he needs to unequip his weapon here and just run. Just run, run fully boost and go, right? Yeah, just run as much as you can and juke as much as you can. And Velnus is like, you know, feeling the blood. He knows that he, that kill can be his. He, he needs like two shots, basically. That's yeah. it. But he's now abandoning the plan. Ooh, the circle is really good for the cliff campers right now. Penta uh, they, again it, in it that. Paid off. Penta with that gamble. Yeah. To take the middle of the circle is paying out heavily. They and took the out Kingwin. Penta is going to get more kills than the cliff campers because everyone is coming from that angle. Mm -hmm, you cannot come mm -hmm. from the cliffs anymore with that many teams. So they're going to be the ones potentially getting a lot of kills and scores from that. Yeah. That is true. There's Good. only one bad position. When you're in that compound, uh, the north side has an edge on you. So if, if you are in like the windows, you can be taken out by snipers mm -hmm. from that. But that's that's the only one like we Yeah, they're not going to stay on the north side probably because anyway, it's a risk. Uh, two people getting knocked out on their bikes there. Uh, they shot the vehicle's tires there to make the vehicle go down a bit so you can't shoot under it, which is a very, very normal and standard strategy in these games. Man, a lot of kills are going down right now. Azimut is down to one player. G2 is down to one player. I mean, we have seen that before. Liquid is down to one player as well. Liquid is trying to go for an uh, ever more strat here by <laughs> getting stuck in the cliffs and hoping for the best circle possible. I mean, Oli is actually one of the players that I have seen from the early stages of the game because he was participating in the first DreamHack winter with PUBG. Mm -hmm. And they actu um, he actually won the game um, in duos. Oh, yeah? The tournament, yeah. It was funny watching the first tournament ever. Now we can see <laughs> some shots in the water. It's so hard to hit someone in the water. That's from Onslaught. Co oh man, how do you even... Okay, it's V as U, so it's counterculture. I'm going to read it as that. Mm. It says a V instead of a U, but what can you do? Counterculture from um, from Onslaught is just taking the water uh, strategy. Is a chance that it will end up in the Ooh. water? Oh, the mist mist kind of cost. It's not easy. Now he knows that he's there and he's not going to stand still for too long. Oh, he gets he it. He got him straight, you know, between the eyes. And he's going to go try to get the people resting him right now. He doesn't even heal up. He knows that he could get a potential second knockout there. Yeah, and he sees the legs, be like, you know, below uh, the UAC. So that's a good way of knocking out people as well. Yeah, there's a lot of really good players who never heals up, really, until mm -hmm. they feel like, now I have some dead time. But yep. when you have a, the chance of getting another kill, they don't heal up. They just sit there and hold. 
Yeah. Team Random just got knocked out as well. Ghoul from Ghost Gaming just killed Define Legit with Frag Grenades. Man, we need to count how many kills with Frag Grenades we got this game. It's gonna be it's a really lot. insane. Probably 10 at least. Uh, we see him flanking behind here, uh, moving up. Is he gonna hear him? I mean, he has to, right? They, he, no, he doesn't hear him at all. Holy moly. He what gets the backstab. He, all right, that was fantastic move by Ultra because of the plane. There was a chance yeah. that he will wow. not hear I his didn't footsteps. I did think about that. That's true. Uh, the plane was passing over, and that's the opportunity he took. That's fantastic. That's that. That's the thing that you need to adapt to. Mm -hmm. If you hear like the plane, there's no chance that no one will hear a footstep, even when you're like really close by. Now we can see Wacker from G2 without a helmet, just Snaking proning, around. proning in the middle. He is actually in the side of. Penta, if I'm not mistaken, no, that was uh, Ghoul from Ghost Gaming. Mm. So if he gets an 8-scope to Wacko, he will get an easy kill. Silky Meat with the AWM paying off to having this stage of the game, especially Noble is when you're down. in the circle. Yeah. All right, we're going. We're, oh. we're seeing a lot of teams going down. Azimut went down. Uh, we can see Ghost Gaming actually going down as well. Wait, how is that possible? Ghoul is still... Uh, that's evil... What I'm talking about? Go Ghoul is from Evil Geniuses. Liquid Oli staying in the water, just trying to get his team as a, to a high as placement as possible. Uh, there's no point in getting up there and trying mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. kill people when you are alone, the sole <laughs> survivor of the team. <laughs> Reviver. <laughs> I mean, it, that can be as well, but not when you're alone, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, now the strategy for that applies to two teams right now. G2 and Liquid needs to do that. A lot of shots... At Pudi, Samurai, and man, what is going on in the middle of the circle? There's a lot of shots. That one shack, high ground. Yeah, it's the uh, cars coming in on the lower side of the cliff, and they're gonna have a really bad position versus these guys that are above them, because uh, they're gonna be deciding whether they want to peek or not, and not the other ones. So many people on the cliffs, and it's it's gonna be really tight here. The water, there's still water on this lost circle, which means that some people can be chasing this out. Yeah, we uh, can for see two placement. players in actually water. Actually, more now because yeah. they're jumping to the water. So we see liquid. That's what you mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. He needs to be as high as possible now when he's the sole survivor. So he's going for the water to be in like let's say top five, maybe. Because yeah. he will just be, you know, going up and down, up and down for the for the br brief that he needs um, to get the. And a lot of shots coming up, blown up vehicle. And Penta. that thing, that was Wacko from G2. He got killed by a vehicle explosion by Penta. Penta is racking those kills insanely. Yeah. They have a fast. lot of kills right now, and it's gonna pay off a lot later on. Uh, every kill they get now is worth even more than in the start because of that exponential uh, point increase mm -hmm. from kills. So Penta looks like the, let's say, favorite favorite right now in the first game. Not only they have four members left, they wrecked a lot of games. They eliminated the entire Kingwin, so that's four kills already. Wacko, that's fifth kill, and I, I'm sure that they got on a lot of a lot of other kills. Unfortunately, the they don't really have a good position here uh, coming into the next white circle. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of cover for them. There's just open field, and I do believe they only have one, one vehicle, vehicle right? and yeah, one bike. And it's bike. a Dacia, so yeah. it's not that a lot, uh, that, not that much of a cover. And this is a tricky situation because they know that there are people above them peeking at all times, and he gets a fantastic, knockout. Wow. <laughs> fantastic shot by that Enzo was insane Lento. reaction times. Yeah, really say. well. Really well played by Enzo Lento. The grenades would have been a great option here for them, but they don't really have any, or they would have thrown them down to the UACs. Yilan um, just chilling at the camp, smoking out that side in case they decide to climb the mountain. This is a tricky situation because there are so many like pits in those rocky formations that even when you have team fights, it can be broken down but really fast, right? You just prone and that's it, and it's the end of the team fight because you just heal in the meantime. I think it's so funny, bikini model is. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on the beach. He's in his own. You know, that that fits him, right? Penta actually wow, managed they actually to go into the into the chat. But there's there's a player there uh, behind. Wow, that's a great takeover. I, I could not imagine that happening. And more grenades are coming down towards the uh, cliff campers. Not quite hitting them, uh, but close to. The smokes and the walls of vehicles are ridiculous right now. That is an insane cover. I can't Pen believe they actually managed that in a Man. few seconds of... Penta is playing fantastically. 
in this game. Not only have the entire team, but we have seen highly, um, let's say, coordinated attacks from them, right? Yeah. With the grenades, fantastic, fantastically played. With those, you know, w with those vehicles here to build up this fort, that requires formation as well. So yeah. it's really fantastic to see teams are being practicing that because I'm sure that th that was being practiced. Now, and right first now, everything is going down. Yeah. People are getting knocked out left and right. The circle is so small right now, and there are so many people remaining relatively. Uh, people are just deciding whether or not it's worth resting at this point or if you should just let your teammate die. I mean, whoever has that shed, they can be the sole survivor of the game. The problem is that the shed is not in the white circle right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard to get out of the shed with all eyes on you. Uh, 16 smokes. people alive in this circle. That's kind of crazy. Even with two knockdowns, that's basically 14 people alive. Yeah, and everyone's just waiting for the blue circle right now. Uh, and Solenso killed one of the Penta members right now with a scar. So they should be down to three, if I'm not mistaken, right now. Yeah. Ultra is still knocked down, so there are two members active, while one is being knocked down. Knock, so the knock. blue is uh, 90 Sorry. seconds away from uh, coming in. Uh, they need to make sure that the people in the white circle are low enough not to be a big threat to them when they're running in later on. The team fight going on, one knocked out. He's gonna get knocked out himself and killed. So yeah, that was Simsy from Penta. He got killed really fast. I mean, when you have this situation, you're being crossfired mm -hmm. by so many angles. It's it's a cacophony of shots. It's a cacophony of, of explosions. You don't know what's happening. You need nerves of steel to actually manage it well tactically. Right. And uh, people are crawling in the middle of this field with smokes and cars circling around them. Uh, this is this is it. This is gonna be the final push for the teams that aren't already in the circle. M two four nine making <laughs> some nice work there. Curdy Curdy with then uh, machine gun is just wrecking people left and right. And the prone recoil is zero. It's a dangerous weapon. Uh, people still crawling around after their first knockout, so not bleeding too much. Hoping That's that team totality getting the middle of the circle now. They're just racking up kills. Look at that. Finishing the knockout people. And, and they won the game. So that's team totality with the first game in GLL. How many kills? Four, that's eight, 12. 12 kills. 12 that's fantastic. Kills. And uh, Penta, how many? They, they got 10 kills. So that's uh, something. Fourth place, it's still good, right? Yeah, but uh, this is going to give them a lot of points into the next uh, r round. Well, when you think about it, first place is 200 points. Second place, 150 the difference is not that big. But they did get uh, a lot of kills too. Exactly. They got the most kills and first place. Yeah, the second place actually has only three kills, right? So, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So that's, I mean, the first game is like an opener, right? It doesn't matter if you did like really badly. Mm -hmm. You can still rack up, you know, in the next four games. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, it's, not a, it's not a decisive game yet, right? Mm -hmm. It's a warm-up game, more of a like getting to know the other teams. You can learn from the positioning of their teams, you can learn from the rotations, especially like if you hear the rotations, like the, the way the vehicles are moving and so on, you can learn the strategy of those teams because we have a mix of NA and EU teams. 11 EU teams and 7 NA teams. All right, yeah. we, we didn't mention one thing, which is a very interesting aspect in GLL. Because of the fact that we have more EU teams, in this best of five, we'll have three games being played on the EU server, while mm. two games were being played on an A server. Yeah, it's a bit more fair to everyone uh, based on the ratio yeah. between the two. And uh, the lag is not that bad for other servers. I think the EU Europeans will have an easier time playing on the NA servers than the NA players will have on the EU servers. Yeah, we have better internet here. We have better <laughs> internet here, but it's, it shouldn't be that big of a deal in, um, in games like this. It can, in the end there, there was a lot of cars, a lot of, um, a lot of explosions, a lot of smokes. It can get a bit laggy for some people, uh, but it's the same for everyone. Yeah, I mean, it's still kind of like a, let's say, a little bit unoptimized game. So everyone has similar problems when it comes to FPS mm -hmm. and so on. But at the same time, you don't need FPS when you throw grenades. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Maybe that's the aspect why people are throwing grenades as well, right? Yeah. I mean, fantastic game so far. It was. Uh, an, Super enjoyable to watch, like all those coordinated attacks, especially like those smokes. Fantastic to I see people yeah. using that at more. I love right? the uh, grenade rain into smoke rain to loot from Penta, yeah. and I love when they took that shed as well with the perfect positioning of the vehicles and two smokes to cover all angles together with the shed. All right, that was the first game of GLL preseason. Don't go anywhere, we'll go to a short break and then go with the second match. <laughs> 